Okay, so let's continue. So here, uh, another instances naman class, uh, no stipulation or hindi pinag-usapan or wala sa kontrata na si vendor in-exempt sa breach of warranty against eviction. So what will be the rules? So anong sinasabi ng batas dito? Number one, the vendor acted in bad faith. So, what if the vendor acted in bad faith? The vendor's liability shall be the same as item, items A to E in 4A, uh, 4A, 4.8.1 above. So, ano yung class? So, ulitin lang natin. Ito yung magiging kaso or liability ni vendor. Letter 4A1. So, here from A to letter E. Dindihan. So, walang stipulation. Kung walang stipulation na nag exempt kay vendor, so, the same. So, next, what if the vendor acted in good faith? So, acted in good faith siya. The vendor's liability shall be the same as item A to D. So, ibig sabihin, hindi magbabayad si vendor ng damages and interest. Dindihan. So, yun lang yung magiging uh, liability ni vendor. <clears throat> Next will be Vendis remedy in case of partial eviction. So, here class, uh, partial eviction, yung kanina na pinag-uusapan natin, uh, buong property or whole contract. So, dito naman, partial eviction lang. So, what will be the rules? So, if the vendee loses by reason of eviction, a part of the thing sold of such importance in relation to the whole that he would not have bought it without the same part, he may demand, number one, rescission of the contract. So, dito class, parte, let's say for example, ang binili na lupa is isang ektarya. Pero yung eviction is kalahating ektarya. So, ibig sabihin class, since yung kalahating ektarya is importante doon sa buong lupa, Ibig sabihin, uh, the remedy ng, uh, the vendor's remedy will be rescission of the contract. So, i-cancel yung kontrata. And B, enforcement of the vendor's liability for eviction. So, easement or servitude. So, dito class, easement or servitude naman tayo. So, what are the concept in an easement or servitude? So, ito na yung uh, tinatanong ni Miss Sangatanan. So, what are the rules on easement or servitude? So, but before that, uh, what are the concept or what is easement or servitude? So, ang sabi sa batas, Article 613 of the Civil Code, it is an encumbrances imposed upon an immovable for the benefit of another immovable belonging to a different owner. So, take note class, since immovable lang nakalagay sa batas, it can be building or it can be uh, lupa or building or land. So, ito lang yung nakalagay doon. So, immovable. So, it can be a building or land. So, that is according to Article 613. So, example. A and B are owners of adjoining lots. So, magkatabi sila ng lupa. The only way by which B can access to his lot from the road is to pass through A's lot. So, he, in, so he enters into agreement with A for A to give him a right of way. So, ang sabi sa example natin class, uh, si B daw, pwede lang daw niya ma-access yung uh, property niya from his property to the road is dumaan dun sa property ni A. So, ngayon, ang ginawa ni B, pumasok siya, pumasok siya ng kontrata with A na si A, bibigyan niya ng daanan si B. So, the right of way is an easement or servitude imposed upon the lot of A for the benefit of the lot belonging to B. So, ibig sabihin class, uh, para ma-enjoy ni B yung kanyang property. So, that is example of easement or servitude. So, question. So, pwede bang mag-demand si A ng 
pera kay B. So, uh, with that class, hindi ko na alam ang sagot. So, uh, probably, kung may matanong kayong attorney, uh, sabihan nyo din ako. So, kung entitled ba si A ng money from B, so, pwede ba siyang mag-demand ng pera kapalit nung uh, daanan kay B. So, that is the that is the example. So, kinds of ismen or servitude. So, number one, apparent ismen. One that is made known and continually keep in view by external science that reveals its use and enjoyment. So, ang sabi ng Article 615, yung apparent ismen daw is, let's for example, magkatabi ng lupa si A at saka si B. Pero, merong daanan na. So, ibig sabihin, meron ng uh, usual na daanan. Naintindihan? So, that is apparent ismen. Non-apparent ismen naman, one which show no external indication of, ex of its existence. So, wala talagang daan. Naintindihan? Kasi, uh, may mga daanan, ay may mga lupa din kasi na yung mga daan is a private. So, so, let's say, for example, so, since it is a private, uh, private land, so, walang daanan, right? Wala tayong nakikita, or walang indication. So, ito yung sinasabi sa non-apparent is meant. So, what are the requisites for vendor's liability? Should the immovable soul be encumbered with is meant or servitude? So, dito naman, class, uh, requisites. What are the liability of the vendor? Kung magbebenta siya ng immovable and meron naka-incumbered na ismend or servitude. So, dapat, since magbebenta ka ng lupa, dapat siguraduhin mo na merong daanan. Number one, or letter A, the ismend must be non-apparent. So, magkakaroon ng liability sa vendor kung non-apparent class ha. Letter B, it must not have been mentioned in the agreement. Hindi naka-mention yung ismend or servitude sa agreement nyo. Pero kapag naka-mention sa agreement, so walang problema. C. It must be such nature that it that it be presumed that the vendor would not have acquired the immovable had he aware thereof. So, ang sinasabi dito sa class article 1560, so by such nature, so si buyer daw, hindi niya bibilhin yung lupa kung alam niyang walang daanan. Naintindihan? So, here sa, sa letter C, yun yung sinasabi sa article 1560. So, the vendis remedy, what will be the remedy of the vendi should the immovable soul be encumbered with any non-apparent easement or servitude? First, within one year from the execution or deed of sale, the vendi may ask for rescission, damages. So, rescission or damages. So, either sa dalawa. Naintindihan? Next, after one year from the execution of the deed of sale, the vendor may ask for damages within a period of one year from the discovery of the easement or servitude. So, yan yung sinasabi sa Article 1560. Next, number five, when the vendor not liable for easement or servitude, so kailan siya hindi liable? When the easement is apparent, syempre meron ng daanan. So, next, when the non-apparent easement or servitude is recorded in the registry of property, unless there is an express warranty that the thing is free from all burdens and encumbrances. So, dito, kasa, sinasabi sa letter B, uh, sabi uh, non-apparent yung easement or servitude, pero yung pagiging non-apparent niya is nakarecord sa Registry of Property or Registry of Deeds. And let us see, when the vendi had acknowledged at the time of the sale of the existence of the easement or servitude, though it was non-apparent, such as when it was mentioned in the agreement. So, here naman class, uh, during the time of sale, uh, sinabi na ni vendor kay vendi na uh, about the easement or servitude. And then, at the same time, non-apparent yon, Pero naka-mention sa agreement. So, walang liability doon si uh, vendor. Next, 
Uh, so let's let's discussion warranty against hidden defects or encumbrances upon the thing sold. So what are the rules? Requisites for enforcement of vendor's liability against hidden defects. Number one, the defects must be must exist at the time of sale. So bago pa. Uh, at the time of sale class or bago pa mangyari yung sale, meron ng hidden defect. Kasi nga, af kasi kapag uh, after the sale, dun lang lumabas yung defect. So, it uh, wala nang liability dun si vendor. Kasi nga, yung ownership is na transfer na kay Vendi upon the delivery ng thing, right? So, ibig sabihin, kapag yung defect is nag-arise during the, after the time of sale, so, there are no uh, liability uh, imposed upon the vendor. Next B, the defect must be hidden. Ibig sabihin, hidden, hindi alam ng buyer. Wala siyang kaalam-alam ng defect. That is, non -patent, not patent or visible. The vendor, however, not be liable for defects that are visible if the vendor is an expert who, by reason of his trade or profession, should be known them. So, take no class. Let's say, for example, uh, buyer at saka si Vendi. Si Vendi is a trader or nagbabuy and sell siya. So, uh, expert na siya about sa mga uh, buy and sell. Ngayon, uh, si buyer bumili kay seller ng, uh, let's say, for example, grains, corn. So, ang specification ni buyer is white corn or puting mais. But, uh, with, uh, dahil doon, ang dinilibay ni seller kay buyer is yellow corn. So, walang kasalanan doon si vendor. Because nga, since si Vendi is an expert, so dapat before ma-perfect yung contract, uh, meron ng tinatawag na professional skepticism on the part of the Vendi. Naintindihan? <clears throat> okay? So, let's have an example. So, S sold to B a specific emerald embossed ring. After the sale, B discovered that the emerald contained a little cracks. So, the cracks on the emerald were hidden and unknown to B until he made a microscopic scrutiny of it. So, ngayon, <clears throat> in this case, class, so C si S is liable to B for the hidden defect. Even if he was not aware of it. So, take note class. Hindi alam ni S na meron palang crack. So, liable still. S is liable to be for a warranty against hidden defects. However, paano kung however class, S shall not be liable kung si B is a expert. Or ibig sabihin, let's say for example, gem, uh, gemology, uh, gemologist siya. So, gemologist or expert in gems. So, who could have known the defect by reason of his profession? So, expert ka pala. So, before sana nangyari yung contract of sale, ma-perfect yung contract of sale, so, alam mo na na merong defect over the goods or the property. So, with that, S is not liable to be for the breach of warranty against hidden defects. So, the defect must render the thing unfit. For the use for which it is un un untended or diminish its fitness for such use to such an extent that had the Vendi been aware thereof, he would not have acquired it or would have given a lower price for it. And then next, the action to enforce it must be made within a period, of, pre period provided by law. So, hindi ka po pwedeng mag-file ng action kung prescribed na. Naintindihan? So, later, uh, I will discuss to you kung kailan ka pwedeng mag-file ng action. So, number two, warranties included. So, implied warranty of fitness for a particular purpose. So, ito yung sinasabi class na warranties of fitness for a particular purpose. Meron siyang particular purpose or specific purpose. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>